Hello friends, welcome to a lecture series on matrix analysis with applications. In the last lecture we have seen that uh, what linear transformation is and what are the fundamental properties of linear transformation. Also we have seen that what is the rank of a uh, linear transformation and how we can define null space or uh, nullity of a linear transformation T. Now in this lecture we will see that how we can find inverse of a linear transformation. Okay. Now first a definition that uh, let uh, V and uh, W be vector spaces over the field F and let T is a uh, linear transformation from V to W. A function u from w to v is said to be an inverse of t if t, uh, t of u is identity of w and u of t is equal to identity of v. If t has an inverse then t is said to be an invertible. Okay. Invertible means there exists a linear transformation u from uh, w to v such that uh, t u equal to identity of w and u t equal to identity of v. Also if t has an inverse then the inverse of t is unique and is denoted by t inverse. Okay. So we have already seen that if we have a linear transformation t from say uh, v to w t then we say that this t is a linear transformation if uh, t of uh, alpha v1 plus v2 is equal to alpha t v1 plus t v2 for all v1 v2 in v and alpha belongs to field. Okay. Now t inverse is a linear transformation from w to v. Okay this is t inverse. T is a linear transformation from V to W and T inverse is a linear transformation from W to V. Now when this T inverse exists? This T inverse exists if we have already seen that this is equal to u basically what we have say uh, u then this will exist if T of u equal to identity of V and u of T equal to identity of W. Now T inverse will exist if and only if the number one point is first point is t must be 1 to 1 and the second is t is on 2 that means uh, that means bijective something like bijective mapping okay now t is 1 to 1 means t of v1 equal to t of v2 implies v1 equal to v2 or nullity of t is 0 or null space of t is simply singleton 0 of v. Now t is on 2 this means t is on 2 means for every w in w there exist v in v such that t of v equal to w. If you take any w in here there will always exist a pre image v in v such that t of v equal to w or or we can define that uh, rank of t ra rank of t which is uh, r t should be equal to dimension of w okay or uh, range of t is equals to w then the then the mapping will be on to so if these two conditions hold then we say that uh, then t is said to be an invertible uh, linear transformation now let us uh, let us uh, solve this problem uh, determine whether linear transformation t in each of the following cases is invertible and if yes find t inverse so the first example is t is from r2 to r2 be defined by this okay so what is t here let us see in the first example t is from r2 to r2 and is given by t of x1 x2 is equal to x1 minus x2 and x1 plus 2x2. Now to verify whether t inverse exists or not or t is invertible or not we have to see two conditions number 1 t must be 1 to 1 and number 2 t must be on 2. So first is t is 1 to 1 or not first we will verify whether t is 1 to 1 or not. Now for t 1 to 1 we have to find the null space of uh, t 
if null space of t is a singleton 0 of uh, v, v here is this r 2, okay, then we say that t is 1 to 1. So, let us find nullity of t, nullity of t is are all those x 1 x 2 in r 2 such that uh, t of x 1 x 2 is 0 0. So, this is equal to all x 1 x 2 in R 2 such that uh, T of x 1 x 2 means this this mapping x 1 minus x 2 is equal to 0 and x 1 plus 2 x 2 equal to 0. So, when we solve these two equations we simply get x 1 equal to 0 and x 2 equal to 0 that means 0 0 is the uh, is the only uh, point which is in the null space of T that is a singleton 0. So, this implies t is 1 to 1. Now, second is t must be on 2, t is on 2. So, for t on 2 means we have to see that uh, rank of t must be equal to w. Okay. Now, if we see if we find uh, rank of t I mean r t, r t is simply uh, range of t sorry it is all x all y 1 y 2 in uh, all y 1 y 2 in w such that t of x 1 x 2 is equals to y 1 y 2. So, this this implies what is t of x 1 x 2? t of x 1 x 2 is simply x 1 minus x 2 and x 1 plus 2 x 2 should be equals to y 1 y 2. So, this implies x 1 minus x 2 should be equal to y 1 and x 1 plus 2 x 2 should be equal to y 2. Now, when you solve these two equations you simply subtract these, these two. So, we will obtain minus 3 x 2 will be equals to y 1 minus y 2 or this implies x 2 equal to y 2 minus y 1 upon 3. Okay. And when you when you find x 1 from the first equation it is y 1 plus x 2 which is equals to y 1 plus y 2 minus y 1 upon 3 which is equals to 2 y 1 plus y 2 upon 3. Okay. So, what we have shown? We have shown that for every for every uh, y 1 y 2 in w there exist x 1 x 2 in uh, v such that uh, x 1 is given by this expression x 2 is given by this expression. That means that simply means t of uh, t of 2 y 1 plus y 2 upon 3 which is x 1 and x 2 is y 2 minus y 1 upon 3 is equal to y 1 y 2. Okay. So, for every y 1 y 2 there exists x 1 x 2 x 1 x 2 in v that means this mapping is on 2. So, this implies on 2 or, or we can apply or we can simply apply rank nullity theorem you see here here nullity is here nullity of t is 0. Okay. Dimension of uh, v is 2 from here and by rank nullity rank ra nullity of t plus rank of t must be dimension of v. It is 0 plus rank of t equal to 2. So, this implies rank of t equal to 2 and this implies mapping is on 2. Okay. So, this is a simple illustration to show that uh, uh, t is on 2. Now, t is on 2 and 1 1 this implies t is invertible. Okay. Now, if t is invertible how can we can find t inverse? So, to find t inverse we, we let uh, we take uh, say t inverse of uh, say z 1 z 2 is equal to say x 1 x 2. Okay. So, this implies t of x 1 x 2 is equal to z 1 z 2 x 1 x 2 is t of x 1 x 2 is uh, this thing okay. and this further equal to x 1 minus x 2 equal to z 1 and x 1 plus 2 x 2 is equal to z 2. Now, when you solve these two you will simply obtain x 2 as as we did here as x 2 as uh, z 2 minus z 1 upon 3 and x 1 as 2 z 1 plus z 2 by 3. Okay. So, that means t inverse of z 1 z 2 is equal to z 
टू जेड वन प्लस जेड टू बाय थ्री एंड जेड टू माइनस जेड वन अपॉन थ्री सो दिस इज टी इनवर्स ऑफ दिस मैप सो फर्स्ट वी हैव टू वैलिडेट वेदर दिस टी इज इनवर्टिबल और नॉट इन ऑर्डर टू वैलिडेट दिस यू हैव टू शो डेट टी इज वन टू वन एंड ऑन टू If it is not one to one or on two, this means t is not invertible. And if if it is invertible, then we can find t inverse using this processor. Okay. Now let's see the next example. We have considered uh, a linear map t from considering all matrices of uh, to order two cross two to P two over field R, and it is given by t of A B C D as this uh, expression. so first we will see that whether this is uh, invertible or not so here t of uh, a b c d matrix of order 2 cross 2 maps to a plus 2 b x plus c plus d x square so first we will find out null space of uh, this linear transformation so we will take all those uh, a b c d in m of 2 uh, cross 2 such that t of a b c d is 0 here 0 means 0 polynomial 0 of uh, p2 0 of p2 means 0 plus 0x plus 0x square so these are all uh, a b c d such that a this expression t of a b c d is simply this expression and this equal to 0 means the constant term equal to 0 the coefficient of x is equal to 0 and c plus d equal to 0 and this means a 0 b 0 if it is c then it is minus c where c belongs to r so clearly the null space Null space is what? Null space is all the linear combinations of uh, this type of matrix, where C belongs to R. So the uh, null space of this is not singleton zero. This implies this is not one to one. Since this map is not one to one, so this mapping is this linear transformation is not invertible. Okay. now the third example we consider all uh, uh, matrices uh, of order 2 cross 2 two matrices of order 2 cross 2 and defined by this expression so let us see whether this is 1 uh, 1 and on 2 or not so here t of a b c d is equal to a plus b then a c then c plus d okay now uh, we have to see whether first first we have to verify whether t is 1 to 1 or not for 1 to 1 we have to find out the null space of t null space of t are all those a b c d such that uh, t of a b c d is equal to zero matrix 0 0 0 0 okay. okay because here mapping going to all matrices of order 2 cross 2 so these are all those a b c d such that now uh, t of this is this matrix and this is equal to 0 so this means a plus b equal to 0 a equal to 0 c equal to 0 and c plus d equal to 0 if a equal to 0 then from here b equal to 0 and if c equal to 0 from here d equal to 0 that means only singleton zero matrix okay and this implies null space of t is only 0 and this implies t is 1 to 1 now we have to see whether t is on to or not so that we can see very easily by using uh, using rank nullity theorem you see nullity of t plus rank of t must be equals to dimension of v here v is matrices of order 2 cross 2 so its dimension is 4 okay nullity is 0 rank of t and it is 4 so this implies rank of t is 4 which is equal to dimension of w w here is also m of order 2 cross 2 whose dimension is 4 so this implies t is on 2 now t is 1 to 1 and t is on 2 this implies t is invertible now if t is invertible then what will be t inverse 
So, we can find T inverse you see here let T inverse of some alpha, beta, gamma, delta is equal to suppose A, B, C, D. Okay? So, this implies T of A, B, C, D will be equals to alpha, beta, gamma, delta and this implies T of A, B, C, D is given by A plus B, A, C and C plus T and it is equal to alpha, beta, gamma, delta this implies a plus b is alpha a is beta c is gamma and c plus d is delta and this implies a is beta okay and uh, b is alpha minus beta c is gamma and d is delta minus gamma so what will be t inverse of alpha beta gamma delta this is say given by a is beta b is alpha minus beta c is gamma and this is delta minus gamma so this will be the t inverse of this linear transformation okay now we will see some properties of inverse of a linear transformation the first property is it is uh, it is a linear map the t inverse of a um, uh, linear transformation is again a linear transformation so, what is the statement of the theorem? Let uh, V and W be vector spaces over the field F and let T from V to W be linear and invertible. Okay. Then T inverse which is which is from W to V is also linear. Okay. So, in order to show that T inverse is linear, we have to take uh, two elements W1 and W2 in W and alpha in uh, field and we have to show that t inverse of alpha w1 plus w2 is equals to alpha of t inverse of w1 plus uh, t inverse of w2. So, uh, in the proof we have taken two uh, vectors w1 and w2 in w and alpha in field and since t is 1 1 and non 2 because t is invertible so then there exists a unique vectors v1 and v2 in v such that t of v1 equal to w1 and t of v2 equal to w2. Therefore, T inverse of uh, V1 equal W1 equal to V1 and T inverse of W2 equal to V2. Now we have to uh, for in order to show that uh, it is uh, linear, we have to show that T inverse of alpha W1 plus W2 is uh, this expression. So T inverse of this will be given by now W1 is T inverse of uh, W1 is T of V1, W2 is T of V2. And since t is linear, so it is t of alpha v1 plus v2. Now, since it is uh, inverse of this, then t inverse of t is an identity. So, it gives the same expression alpha v1 plus v2 and v1 is t inverse of w1 and v2 is t inverse of w2. So, we have shown that this t inverse is also linear. Okay. So, if t is linear and invertible, then t inverse is also linear and invertible, invertible also. Okay. Now, a linear transformation T is said to be non-singular if T of V equal to 0 implies V equal to 0. That means, the null space of T contains singleton 0 or nullity of T is 0. Okay. Evidently, T is 1 to 1 if and only if T is non-singular. Okay. Because you already know that if nullity, nullity of or null space of t is a singleton 0, this means t is 1 to 1. So, we can say that t is 1 to 1 in a, if and only if t is non singular. Now, the next result is if v and w be finite dimensional vector spaces and t is a linear map from v to w, then, then we have to prove that. Uh, we have to prove the first and two result. So, for the, what is the first result? The first result is that if dimension of uh, V is less than dimension of W, then T cannot be on to. So, let us try to prove this result. Now, T is a linear map from V to W. Okay. So, in the first part dimension of uh, V is less than dimension of W and we have to show that T cannot be on to.
Now, when t will be on to t will be on to when r of t t will be on to when uh, t will be on to if r of t equal to dimension of w. Okay. So, by the rank nullity theorem, we know that uh, nullity of t plus rank of t equal to dimension of v and dimension of v is less than dimension of w, it is given to us. So, this implies rank of t will be less than dimension of w minus nullity of t. Now, nullity of t is always getting equal to 0, we know this. So, negative of nullity of t will always be less than equal to 0. So, this implies rank of t because this is always less than equal to 0 with negative sign. So, this will again be less than 0, I mean less than dimension of w. So, this means rank of t is always less than dimension of w, it will never be equal to dimension of w. So, this means t cannot be on to. Okay. So, the first part of the theorem is over. So, the next part is if dimension of v is more than dimension of w, then t cannot be 1 to 1. Okay. Now, again t is a linear map from v to w and dimension of v is more than dimension of w and we have to show that t cannot be on 2, I mean t cannot be 1 to 1. That means, uh, nullity of t uh, uh, cannot be 0 or nullity of t is always strictly greater than 0, this we have to show. Okay. Now, again apply rank nullity theorem, it is uh, nullity of t plus rank of t is equals to dimension of v, okay, okay, which is uh, which is more than dimension of w. So, this implies, now if, if, uh, if nullity of t equal to 0, then this implies the R t is more than dimension of w from, from this expression, which is not possible. This is not possible because rank of t can never exceed dimension of v, because range of t is a subspace of w. Okay. So, this implies nullity of t can never be 0 or nullity of t will be strictly greater than 0 and implies t cannot be 1 to 1. Okay. So, uh, this uh, proof of this is over. Now, the next result is let t let t be a linear transformation from v into w. Then t is non-singular if and only if t carries each linearly independent subset of v onto a linearly independent subset of w. That means, if you if t is a linear map and is non-singular also, then, then you take any linearly independent subset of v it always map to linearly independent subset of w or if this happens for any subset from t to w i mean from v to w okay then t is non singular so how we can show this the proof is simple you can see here you see uh, here t is a linear map from v to w okay we have to show that t is non singular if and only if t carries each linearly independent subset of v onto linearly independent subset of w. Okay. So, first of all let us uh, let us take t is non singular, let t be non singular. Okay. So, so, we have to show that uh, if we take any subset say we take S as uh, V 1, V 2 up to say V k be a, a linearly independent uh, subset of uh, V, then we have to show 
that uh, then we have to show that uh, t of v 1 and t of v 2 and so on t of v k is also a lie of tableau. So, to show that it is a lie we have to take a linear combination of these elements put it equal to 0 and try to show that all scalars are equal to 0. So, let the alpha 1 t v 1 and so on up to alpha k t v k equal to 0. Now, since t is linear so this implies alpha 1 v 1 and so on up to alpha k v k equal to 0 and this implies alpha 1 v 1 and plus and so on plus alpha k v k belongs to null space of t uh, because t of this element is equal to 0 this means this belongs to null space of t, but uh, t is non singular given to us and t is non singular this means null space will contain only singleton 0 and this implies alpha 1 v 1 plus and so on up to alpha k v k equal to 0, but, but this set is linearly independent it is given to us s is linearly independent. So, since s is linearly independent this implies alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to and so on up to alpha k equal to 0 since s is a lie and this shows that this set is also linearly independent. So, the first part of the proof is over. Now, let us suppose let us suppose T carries each L i subset of V onto L i subset of W. We have to show uh, the converse part now and we have to show that T is non singular. T is non singular means we have to show that the null space of T will contain only singleton 0. Okay. Let uh, uh, V be a non zero vector in V. Okay. Now, uh, let us consider a set containing this V. Okay. If we consider a set containing this V and suppose it is L i, okay. uh, suppose S is a set containing V is L i. So, by this uh, assumption that T carries each L i subset of V onto L i subset of W, then, uh, then uh, a set a set containing T of V in uh, uh, of, of W is also a lie. Is also a lie means uh, T of V will not equal to 0, okay, then only it will be a lie. So, we have shown that v not equal to 0 implies t v is not equal to 0, we have shown that t of v not equal to 0 implies t of v is not equal to 0. That means, null space of v contains only singleton 0, no other element other than other than 0 and that means t is non singular. Okay. The next definition is isomorphism, what do you mean by isomorphism? You see if V and W are the vector spaces over the field F, then any 1 1 linear transformation T of V onto W is called an isomorphism of V onto W. I mean if T is uh, if a linear transformation T is 1 1 and onto from V to W then that linear map is called an isomorphism of V onto W. If there exists an isomorphism of V onto W, then we say that V is isomorphic to W. Okay. So, if we have a linear transformation T from V to W such that T is 1 1 and onto, then we say that then we say that V is isomorphic to W. Okay. So, in this lecture we have seen we have discussed some of the important properties about about inverse of a linear transformation. In the next lecture, we will see a matrix associated with a linear transformation. Thank you.